Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. You know, I miss the Osiris. I miss the Osiris. I miss the Take No Prisoners, Ruthless Osiris. Not this Bible thumping, Bible quoting version that we seem to be stuck with. This whole conversation with Marty and Laura and Cyrus was damn near pointless. It really was. The only thing that was somewhat interesting was when he said that given Spencer's early release, Victor may try to paint that, um, you know, put that on Laura to get her out of office. Um, you know, saying that Irene was acting on her orders. That's about it. Um, that was literally about it. Everything else was just entirely pointless. Um, and given the fact that she already knew that Irene was working for Victor, it was even more pointless. They talked about Luke, and he talked about how he wants to sit there and help her get revenge, get justice for Luke and everything, which, by the way, <laughs> it's been going on for how long, and we still are nowhere closer to finding out what happened with Luke and if he really died and everything like that. And the fact that they actually bunged that up today was pretty insulting when you really think about it. Um, the only thing that was of any interest in this whole episode was Esme working Demetrius. That was it. That was literally it. Um, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't feeling a Ava coddling Trina when Trina felt kind of guilty about dumping Rory before he got killed. I didn't appreciate that. I didn't like that at all. Because she was all like, well, you can't help how you feel or something like that. And that's true. You can't help how you feel. But she could have been honest about her feelings. She could have been much more honest. She could have been honest much earlier about her feelings towards Rory. At that whole comic book convention. She could have been honest right then and there or the day after. But she didn't. So Ava Smith there coddling her really pissed me off. Um, Spencer coming over there to apologize to Ava about the way he treated her. That was good. I mean, let's be honest. His whole motivation for being angry with her about a deal that she made years ago. Years ago. And he was still butthurt ever since then. Because she didn't, you know, testify against Valentine. You know, as a kid, I understood his anger. But when he became old enough, when he became 19, and he still carried that, that was completely and utterly stupid. You know? And when you really think about the whole circumstance behind that, the fact that she wanted to get her, her face fixed, and even if she did testify against Valentine, it wouldn't have meant that he would have went to jail, and she would have lost that opportunity for nothing. So, I mean, yeah, I'm glad that he did apologize finally, but the whole resentment in the first place was just idiotic. And the only reason why he apologized is because he realized that his father failed him and failed her when she, when he was like, you know, I didn't think that you were good enough for my father, but I realized that my father is pretty much just a POS anyway. But that was the only reason why. You know, if, if, if their relationship was fine, he would not have had a reason to sit there and apologize to her. So in a lot of ways, his apology just felt, well, flat. Felt flat. <sighs> you know, Anna and Valentine's storyline are just going at this extremely snail-paced movement, which is... is it's not even frustrating. It's worse than that. It's boring. So they meet up with Andre Maddox because that's the contact that, you know, she came there to meet. He's asking questions 
um, about the location of his base or of um, Victor's base. Feel like you know if he can if they can find a base, they can find Lucy. But the thing is. <clears throat> The thing is, Andre is blindfolded the whole time. So he doesn't know exactly where it's at. He just knows like little turning points and or like he has he has some idea of where it might be, but he doesn't have an exactly location because he was blindfolded. But he says, Hey, listen, if you take me with you, I might be able to sit there and memorize something. He talked about turning off points, and I'm like how did you know turning off points if you were blindfolded? Like, I, I don't understand how he can actually help them find a direction or find this, this, this base if he was blindfolded. But he wants to volunteer his services, his services in case he might remember something. So what you're telling me is that this whole meeting, which is nice to see you, this whole meeting pointless so okay cool I get it he doesn't trust Valentine trust me I get that but I don't trust him when you really think about it you don't know exactly where the location is but if you're in that area in that vicinity you might memorize something nah I don't trust him I really don't. Um, I'm interested to see what that's gonna, where, where it's going to go. But I just have this feeling that Andre is going to sit there and double cross them. We haven't seen this guy in years. We don't know what his, what his motivations is. What, you know, he, he might have changed completely. He might be, I don't know, part of the dark side or something. We, we just don't know. Um, so I guess we'll find out at some point in time whenever this storyline decides to move forward. And the conversation between Britt and Obrick was okay. It wasn't exactly my favorite. I know some people will like it. I it didn't really do anything for me. Um, we just found out that more people know about her disease or her, I guess it's disease. I, I'm, I'm not really too sure what it is. More people know. Nina knows and Sonny knows. Um... And Britt is still lying to Obrick about her leaving. Well, saying that, you know, at first, Obrick came in there and she saw the suitcase. She's like, where are you going? And Britt was like, I'm going on a, you know, a little vacation. So throughout their talk, she just sat there and just lied to, their fate, to her face. And then they had some sort of nice, sweet, sappy conversation that didn't really go anywhere. But I guess it was nice for some people. So it didn't do, it didn't do anything. I was going to be honest. It, it really... <laughs> you can't tell by my tone. It didn't really do anything for me. Um, to be honest, this episode didn't really do much for me. Except for the fact that um, Esme is working Demetrius. And now, you know, with him agreeing to spend time with her to make sure that she's eating, um, you know, it's, it's one step close to her goal as far as escaping. So that was the only interesting part. Even the stuff with Nicholas walking in. Honestly, to tell you, Nicholas walking in to talk to Esme is like every other time when Nicholas talked to Esme. Nothing happens. Nothing changes. They just go back and forth. And it leads nowhere. Really, it really doesn't. That's why I didn't really mention their conversation too much. Because it doesn't go anywhere. And of course, Nicholas walks downstairs. And Spencer is about to leave. But Victor talks to him. And, you know, Spencer's like, I want to pass my dad. Now, it's a thing. I'm not a huge fan of Nicholas and the stuff that he's doing right now. But at the end of the day, they are two consenting adults. And I'm like, Spencer, you've made messes in your life. Okay? So in reality, you have no room to sit there and judge Nicholas on the stuff that he's done. But he's all like, oh, well, you know, what, what he did was bad and he took advantage of her and this, that, and the third. And I'm just like, man, I love when 19 year olds and 18 year olds sit there and start judging adults about the stuff that they've done. And you haven't even lived life yet. 
Okay? You are nothing more than a rich, spoiled prick of a kid who haven't even lived life yet. And yet you want to sit there and constantly judge your dad. It just gets on my nerves. It really gets on my nerves. Um, but Nicholas walks downstairs and, you know, he's all like, no, 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 he should be his own man as far as him leaving. So, you know, Spencer leaves and, you know, um, what's his name? Victor talks to um, Nicholas about Liz and making sure they don't get too close. And, you know, she doesn't really know a lot of the family secrets. And, um, one second. Yeah, just making sure that Liz doesn't get too close um, like like Ava did. And that, you know, he's going to be handling the whole divorce thing or whatever. And he's like, all right, fine, whatever. Do, it, do whatever the hell you want. I honestly tell you, too, if it was another conversation that was just pointless. And didn't really go anywhere. So, um, I think that's about it. I don't know. These, these episodes have been lacking. They've been really lacking um, lately. I'm pretty sure it's probably going to be interesting during the whole Brit party thing. But it's just something that's just inherently disappointing. That's just been disappointing about a lot of these episodes. Hell, there's been times where I would get home from work and be like, man, I can't wait to watch Days of Our Lives and The Young and the Restless. And then at some point, TH. Also, um, yeah, I haven't been doing a lot of days reviews. It's like when I get home, I've had so little time between trying to at least watch all four of them. And do the live stream. Because I, I love doing the live stream and stuff like that. But I've been watching Days of Our Lives. So I've been keeping up with the story. And when I do get some more time, I'm definitely going to sit down and do a review. Um, it's just been kind of crazy. It's like, even today when I woke up, because I was off of work, but I woke up so late. <laughs> By the time I woke up late and started eating and stuff like that and, and doing grocery shopping, it was like, Jesus was on. Next thing you know, it was like 5 o'clock. And I'm like, yeah, this sucks. But I will be sitting up there doing some more Days of Our Lives on review soon. Um, it's just, like I said, the day has just been getting away from me. And it's been so irritating. And I and I got, I got clearly I got to do something better as far as managing my time. So with that being said, I'm going to go. But tonight I will be doing another live stream, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. So if there's some more stuff you want to sit there and talk about in this episode that I might have missed, because let's be honest, this episode was, eh, wasn't really great. But there's some stuff you want to sit there and talk about that I didn't touch on for some odd reason. Definitely be sitting there doing that during the live stream. With that being said, I'm going to go. Thank you for watching. Be safe. And I'll see you in the next video.